Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going through the entire print and paint process of this guy. This is Squirtle from the Kanto Starter Set, and this is honestly one of my favorite paints that I've done, and mostly because of the challenge that I had. So you can see that this is Squirtle in the process of being printed. And here he is once he gets off of the, the print. And he's just fresh off the printer. And I printed on my Photon Anycubic uh, resin SLA printer. And you can see that all the supports worked out great. And he just looks amazing. This awesome model is by the artist Mar Pros 3D. And he has actually done all of the other two Pokemon that I was working on previously and Squirtle's actually the last one so I will put a link to these models in the description and you can check him out he's got a lot of awesome 3d prints or 3d models for 3d printing so this is just me going through my process of cleaning the Squirtle I washed him in the alcohol bath and you can see how I cleaned up really well and there I just decided to show you the entire process of me taking off all the supports and cleaning it up. So you can see how I just go through little by little and then I check for those little knobs and check out for any other little tiny fl flakes or uh, things that need to be cut off. I find a razor blade works really well, that's why I was using an X-Acto knife and it cuts them and you don't get a lot of divots. So once he's all clean uh, and cut up, then I just kind of rinse him off again uh, just by hand, not actually doing a full cycle of cleaning him. That way I can just get any extra little flakes and pieces that might have gotten on there because the shavings can get on there. And then I also just kind of get the inside since it is hollow and wash that out one more time. Once I've done that, then I go ahead and I get a paper towel and I just start wiping him off and drying him out. And one thing, I always wrap it and give it a few shakes to try to get rid of any resin or any extra alcohol on the inside. And just giving him a really good wipe down and making sure he looks nice and clean and there's no imperfections on it. And I do this for every single print just to make sure. And then I will go ahead, once he's fully dry, I will put him on my cure station and then just cure him. And this is the final result. He turned out amazing and I was really happy with him. The tail did have a few little... Uh, support marks that I eventually did sand down but uh, other than that it, it just turned out really great uh, just how the model was I could get a lot of uh, big holes in the bottom of him and hollow him out and use very uh, little resin And here he is after I primed him. I figured I didn't need to show uh, my spray booth of me just priming what it, uh, white on him. But I use Vallejo primer, I airbrush primer, and it always goes on really good. And it just gives a good foundation for the paint to come to. Then after that step, I went ahead and applied a base coat to the skin of uh, Baby Powder Blue. 
Um, I honestly forgot to record that process, but it was so simple that I just coated the whole thing, any skin areas, with this baby blue. And it works out really well. It was a good base tone um, for what I was planning on for the next step. And the next step was I took a very baby blue again that was a gloss, and I lightly misted the top of him. Um, and any of the skin parts to get more of a shine to it because I wanted that glossy look so it is a wet Pokemon uh, a wet type or water type and uh, I wanted him a little bit shiny and glossy because I thought that would really stand out among the other two since they're all matte and having a little bit of a gloss coat on him would be really cool and you can see how he does have a little bit of a shine to him so then started the long process of my masking and painting, masking and painting. Uh, Squirtle did take the longest out of the three Pokemon because of all of the masking, because I wanted to do a lot of airbrushing. So you can see that I'm right now masking off the back shell. Um, it was really important to me to be able to airbrush his shell and be able to get some nice gradients on it. So I'm just taping it on there and using my X-Acto knife, tweezers, and uh, a skewer uh, or a sharp uh, toothpick and going through and just masking it off. And then I'm masking the bigger areas that don't actually have an edge with just blue painter's tape. But I'm using the Tamalia uh, masking tape anywhere that has an edge because it gets in those corners and creases really well. So you can see here, this is the final result, and I don't actually fully wrap the model right, because I'm I'm painting it very directionally, and I won't have to worry about overspray and getting it on the front side of it because it's only from the back angle. So this is actually good enough for me. So then I'm just going to bring it into the airbrush booth and uh, then I just start applying light coats of brown to it. So I think I, in, in total I put three or four coats of brown on this because each coat uh, it got a little darker and a little darker and I just kept doing this until uh, I was satisfied with the amount of brown that was there. <laughs> Once I got the brown coat, then I went to a darker brown and started doing the edges because I wanted the center of the shell to be that brown, but I wanted the edges of the shell to be a darker brown. So I went ahead and did that and it didn't take very long, it was only one coat. Then kind of bringing it back and got all of the masking tape off and then it was time to just move forward and get the soft shell or the stomach part done. And this took quite a long time to do. It was a lot of masking because getting up underneath the arms and you know the belly area was really hard. But overall, I think the masking turned out really well. And you can see that process here. The biggest key to doing this is always starting with a sharp X-Acto knife. And then I use uh, like a needle tip tweezers to put all of my masking tape in and just keep cutting it in and I use a toothpick with a sharp point to be able to get it tucked away in those corners um, and then once they are tucked away in the corners then I'll use my exacto knife to cut away right at those corner seams and then pull it away with my tweezers but you can watch this entire process
Like I said, it did take some time, uh, but here's the final result. You can see that the soft shell is all exposed and everything else is completely covered up and I used the blues painters tape to cover up the bigger areas and I think in the end I used a few more pieces of blue painters tape to be able to uh, cover it up even more. But then I just go in and I'm just doing a base coat and really just getting that down. Um, it actually went down really quickly and once I did that, I went ahead and made a darker yellow to help with the shadowing. And I did that underneath his neck and underneath the arms and right where he sits on the ground. And it really had a really good effect. But pulling off all the tape and stuff, there was no bleeding over the edges. The tape did a really great job. And I was super, super excited with how it turned out. The next step was getting the edge of the shell to finish up that shell. So I went ahead and did a base coat white and I knew this was going to take two to three coats of white. So I just watered down some white acrylic paint and started painting the edge. Once I had that white edge done, I moved on to the seams of the shell, so those little creases. And I just did a really dark orange um, and got the edges of that on the front of the shell. And then when I moved on to the back, I went ahead and just added black because I really wanted a lot of that good definition. So I went ahead and had a black edge line there and you can see I'm using a Q-tip because when I'm dealing with little creases like that, I keep a Q-tip you know, on the ready to be able to wipe away any paint I get in areas I don't want and wipe it down really quickly because you, with some water and a Q-tip you can wipe away paint while it's still wet and it won't affect your print. Once the edging was done, I went back and hit the white edge of the shell one more time um, just to make absolutely sure you don't see any of the blue showing through and just working on that. And after that, it looked really good. So once the shell was completely done, I moved on to the eyes, and yet again it was more masking because I wanted a gradient on the eyes. Um, I could have done it all by hand, but I wanted to do it airbrush, and um, I went ahead and masked off the eyes because I wanted a gradient of red to a lighter red, 
and so I went ahead, masked them off the exact same way, and just covered up the rest of his face. And here was the result of doing his eyes with a gradient. And the first step I had to do when I got it back was I had to get the whites of the eyes painted. Um, I did have a little bit of leaking through the mask of the, the painter's tape, but uh, I went ahead and corrected that a little later. But you can see that I started working on the mouth and the eyes back and forth uh, just to kind of let those dry so I could work on multiple things at once. Then my favorite part is applying a high gloss black in the pupil of the eye. I always like the shine of the eyes when you use a black like that. So I actually just apply a thick coat. And then you can see here that I'm actually fixing some of that overspray, or not really overspray, but the mask leaked out. So some of that color got on his face. So I went ahead and used that same blue and applied that paint again and then I just watered down my brush and just tried to fade it out as much as I can to blend it as well as I can. But overall it turned out really well. Then the last thing was just applying the pink to the tongue. And this guy really came to life after that. I went through the model and made sure that there isn't any other places to do some touch-ups and there was some minor areas that I took care of. And this is the final result. So this is the last Pokemon, uh, Squirtle, and I think he turned out really well. It was a fantastic model and once again it's by the artist Mar Pros 3 d and I will go ahead and put a link to him in the description because you can purchase this model at cults3d.com but uh, I, I'm really happy with him. I did a lot of airbrushing on him. He took a lot of time with all of the masking of his shell and things but it looked great and quite honestly seeing them all together like this is so much fun. I mean there's so much personality in these and I'm so happy I got to do all three of them and uh, I was just really happy with the results and I hope you are too and I want to just say thanks for watching. If uh, you want to see more of my videos and help support the channel please feel free to hit the subscribe button it would be greatly appreciated. So thanks for watching and other than that I just hope you have a great day. Bye.